Hey there, my name is Ruben and welcome to this special update on Mixpanel. It's 2020 and I'm really excited to talk about the changes that Mixpanel has been making. I've been using Mixpanel with my clients for maybe just under five years now. And I've really seen how the company has grown, how it struggled, and it's really exciting to see some of the things the company has been doing over the past year, actually. So in this video, I really want to talk about three things. Uh, one, uh, look at Mixpanel today. Uh, what's their 2020 position and futures, where it seems the company's going, the changes they've been making. Next, I want to help you understand how Mixpanel fits into your stack. Uh, so how does it work if you're a consumer or if you're e-commerce or B2B or small size, big size, things like that. And third, help you understand how tools as a whole fit into a strategy. So not just mix panel, but what's the interplay between multiple tools or a stack as it's sometimes called and how to think about this. I know mix panel very well. Uh, I used it for a long time, but I'm not going to talk about every little report here and I'm, I won't get to cover every little new thing that mix panel has released. Instead, uh, this is a, a strategic conversation, the one I have with clients all the time around how to choose a tool like Mixpanel and how to bring it in to your organization. So I'm going to show you the website. I'm going to show you the product. I'm going to show you interesting things uh, that I think you should know. And this will help you make a decision as to whether you should use uh, Mixpanel or maybe use something else. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. So follow along. And let's do a little deep dive into Mixpanel in 2020. Let's dive into Mixpanel. You know, Mixpanel is a special place, I think, in my heart. I, uh, I think I've been using it for, wow, five years now. I uh, created this course a few years ago, and I think I've written a lot on Mixpanel from technical things to, oof, I don't even know, uh, lose track. So I've seen the tool evolve a lot over the past few years. I seen the space evolve, and I also got a chance to understand where it fits into a very growing ecosystem, right? And how it plays along with other tools. Uh, what's the difference between this and something like uh, like a BI tool, like Looker and Mode and Tableau and so on? Uh, so let me tell you this. You know, it, it's really built uh, around product analytics and trying to understand. Uh, primarily software products, you know, web apps, mobile apps. But the data model is flexible enough that you could really use it to analyze e-commerce and media companies and really almost anything. But that's been the, the primary goal to it. Uh, the very fundamental reports that you'll see here, you know, being able to slice through data, for example, like this, uh, taking events and then seeing trend lines. We can then break this down by, you know, by country, See what this looks like. Um, so, um, this is already the fundamental idea. We have events, event properties. We can go through them. We can build funnels. We can build uh, core analysis uh, with retention. We can see individual users. Uh, we can send messages, and experiments. Uh, it's a lot of the basics in Mixpanel. Now, over the past two years, the tool wasn't changing very much. And it actually felt that some of the competitors were uh, much better. You know, Amplitude uh, was one that was coming to mind quite a bit. Uh, but over the last six months, maybe 12 months, uh, Mixpanel has been doing a fantastic job at updating the tool. And what you see here is a lot of new things, a lot of new UI, completely new reports like impact, flows, uh, we have uh, cohorts in here, which is also brand new. Uh, data management, which is a data governance. Uh, some of the new things that were added. So Mixpanel today in early 2020 is a solid tool. It definitely feels up to par uh, with what whatever else is on the market. And it's also quickly changing, right? They're adding a bunch of new things and there seems to be an energy in the company uh, for releasing uh, new features and really catching up, right? Um, there's also a big trend towards leveraging some of the machine learning trends, uh, what they call you know data science models. Uh, so things like you know some of the predict, 
Uh, this is impact, impact theory launches, and this is signal, right? These are some of the machine learning uh, reports that they're releasing to help you take your data and run some more advanced models, even if you don't have the people in house to do it. Uh, so that's where uh, some of the work that MakesPanel has done has, has gone. They also done a lot of uh, integrations, uh, so taking the data out, uh, something that's I think quite popular and will continue to be quite popular. Uh, so either bringing data in or bringing data out, and they expanded their their messaging a little bit, right? Uh, you know, we have journeys here, uh, which is um, similar to what uh, something like Intercom might do. We have multiple messages in a, in a single uh, in a single campaign. You, they added dashboards. Believe it or not, dashboards wasn't here uh, for a long time, and now you can build custom dashboards of different kinds with different widgets. It's fantastic. You can get those emailed to you uh, on a regular basis, weekly, daily, or whatever you want. So the tool as a whole has changed a lot uh, it, in very little time. Uh, so I'm excited to see where they go over the next six to nine months uh, for the remainder of the year, just because they've done such a fantastic job at catching up. Um, if you compare it to something like Amplitude, future-wise, they're very similar. Uh, now, there, there's a few differences. You know, the, the pricing model that Amplitude has tends to be easier to start with um, if you fit within their free model. Um, Mixpanel, you'll start paying pretty quickly. Uh, one benefit is that Mixpanel does give you access to a lot of things uh, out of the box. Uh, Amplitude, on the other hand, will limit a lot of their more advanced reports to their higher paid channels. I also think Amplitude has a bit of an advantage when it comes to analysis. There's a lot of little things that have been built in the Amplitude product that just makes analysis easier just when it, when you're trying to add data or sum it or organize it. Uh, but the little things, uh, I wouldn't call them huge winners, they're just minor things. Uh, the UI that Mixpanel has uh, seems to be uh, perhaps slightly better uh, than, than Amplitude. I think that's subject subjective. I think I find it uh, a little better. And one of the big wins, of course, Mixpanel has is the ability to send messages within the same product. So if you don't have an intercom or an iterable or a brace, you can save yourself uh, a second implementation and just simply send data with a Mixpanel and then track it with a Mixpanel. So you get this uh, a more uh, comprehensive system for managing and tracking your data. Other than that, you know, they're, uh, they're very similar uh, beyond that. Um, and, you know, with clients, we, we sometimes have to make choices between them. And when we compare them and we rank them, we still end up, I think, pretty, pretty close. You know, there, uh, there might be a couple factors like the messaging that edge it out. But a lot of the core functionality is, is really similar. Uh, that I think they're fantastic choices uh, for any company that's looking for them. Now the space is changing. As you can see, the, I think the future parity is something that will continue. That is, their, the tools will continue to be somewhat similar in future, uh, maybe slightly different directions, but nothing completely uh, different, uh, unlike maybe Heap, which has a very philosophical difference in how they track data. As a side note, you know, Mixpanel actually added uh, an auto track functionality, and uh, they actually had to shut it down. Uh, just it, it didn't work as expected, and it's never come back come back online. So I think uh, don't think Mixpanel will continue going that route of uh, auto tracking data. <clears throat> but I would expect to see more integrations in the space. You know, more ways of bringing data in uh, to the product and taking data out. I think it's about freeing the data uh, and not keeping it locked in. Uh, it's about playing nicer with other tools in your stack uh, because there's no one tool that can do it all. And I will also s expect to see more machine learning reports. So see more ability to run advanced models on your data without having uh, full-time data scientists. So that's where I would see the space going. And it's just, it's exciting. You know, there's a lot of things that this tool can do. And I think uh, you can get a lot of value from it uh, very quickly. <clears throat> Lastly, let's talk a little about uh, the broad strategy. Let's let's not uh, get completely caught up in the weeds and look at uh, the bird's eye view. Uh, you you want to think about your strategy in three dimensions. 
people who's going to be using the data, process, how they actually go through the data and find insights, and then providers, uh, the tools, the software. Mixed panel is, of course, at the very top, uh, but you really want to go bottom up. Uh, if you go top to bottom, as a lot of companies do, you're going to choose a tool based on what you think might be cool or what might other companies in your industry be using. And then by the time you get down to people, the unique makeup of your company, you might find yourself a little stuck with something that just doesn't really resonate with who your team is or what they need or what they're able to do. Uh, so any data strategy, you want to make sure that uh, you, you give it some time to think about these three dimensions and make sure they all align with each other and you're not just going based on what could work or what could be awesome. Uh, it's sort of trying to base it in reality and build a foundation that makes sense before you take on tools at the very top. And that's it for Mixpanel. You know, um, in the way the product has changed a lot, uh, a lot of the fundamentals are still there. I think there's been a lot of improvements that make the product way better. Uh, even the pricing, you know, they, you know, Mixpanel moved to an MTU pricing, a monthly track user pricing, which makes it easier to understand uh, instead of just before I think they had a, a people component, event component, and it, it was hard to explain, even for me. So now we can just look at how many users you have and just simply track it based on that. Um, so it's a, it's a simplified pricing uh, that works for most users. So great choice. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know uh, by posting them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, make sure to also like and subscribe to this video. And uh, as always, my name is Ruben. We'll talk soon.